I believe that hell is not found beneath the earth, but a world that resides within the deepest, darkest parts of our mind. A world that is created by materials that reside within our twisted imagination. A fable horror that numbs us to the real hell. An ancient horror story that scares us onto the righteous path and guilt us from enjoying the devil's playground as human beings just so we don't endure the endless suffering after we had taken our last breath. But what if, what if we found ourselves trapped within that hell, the one that resides within our minds? This poor lady, my friends, a woman who's been kept within this hospital because of her crippling fear of death, fearing the unknown. She spends her days on edge, believing that she's living on borrowed time, afraid that one night death will come and collect his due. And on this night, frozen with absolute terror when hearing something outside her room, roaming the darkened hallways of the hospital, it was when this woman would see the door of her room slightly open. She would throw herself into a frenzy when seeing her unexpected visitor. It was death, and he was coming for her. Introduction, Dr. Kuroda, our neurosurgeon who's about to experience an enigma that will leave him with a different perspective of life and death. One of his patients, Mammy, had an incident last night where she was visited by another patient, resulting with an increase of erratic behavior and violent outbreaks, and lowering the chances on seeing Mammy overcome this crippling fear of death. But Dr. Kuroda is a persistent man, a doctor who's devoted on seeing his patients push through their illnesses and struggles. It's sad, seeing a woman being deprived from living out her life in peace because of something that's natural, spending your entire life under the weight of fearing death itself. It's no way for a person to live, which is why Dr. Kuroda is fully confident that he will cure this woman, regardless of how impossible it may seem. But what Dr. Kuroda is more concerned about, other than Mammy, was the man who visited her last night. The devil, as she called him. And alongside with a fellow doctor, Dr. Yamachi, who's new and curious about the strange patient he's only heard about. And why last night's event was troubling Dr. Kuroda. That was when Dr. Kuroda began enlightening Dr. Yamachi with the strange case of Tetsuro Mikoda. Tetsuro suffers from a bizarre and devastating sleep disorder, probably the best way to describe it. Came in about two months ago, claiming that when he falls asleep, his dreams are longer than they should be. It was a few weeks prior to his visit, where Tetsuro's dreams would feel as if they were about two or three days long in a single night. At first, Tetsuro didn't know what to make of the dreams, nor why they were spanning out and he tried dismissing them as something that would eventually pass. Except, the dreams begin to grow longer, taking a toll on Tetsuro's mind, waking up with his memory being corrupted because of how he would struggle on remembering what he did on the previous day. What was more concerning was how Tetsuro was feeling as if he were losing touch with reality. These dreams Tetsuro was having, he described them to be bizarre and terrifying. Normally, when someone would wake up from a dream or a terrible nightmare, it's the real world that helps us cope with that experience. Easily moving on without fearing the following dream because of how our minds are conditioned with the fact that dreams are not real, just figments of our imagination. But to experience them within the time span of two, three, or more days, that would be agonizing. In the day when Tetsuro checked in, he claimed that the last time he slept, he was in a dream for about a year. Of course, Dr. Kuroda was skeptic, assuming that Tetsuro was suffering from a condition that led him into believing a lie. The idea of someone experiencing a dream for a year was absurd. So that night, 
Dr. Kuroda decided to examine Tetsuro and his sleeping patterns. And it wasn't until an hour later, that was when he saw it. Tetsuro's body clenching and convulsing, his eyes darting everywhere frantically. It was over as soon as it begun. According to the brainwave scan, Tetsuro was in his deepest sleep, and when Dr. Kuroda immediately began waking Tetsuro from his sleep, Tetsuro woke up with no memory of being in the hospital. It took a while before Tetsuro realized that it was yesterday he spoke to Dr. Kuroda, and yet it still felt like it was a year and a half ago before he had that horrible dream. That was when Dr. Kuroda was convinced that this man was suffering from a condition that he would later dub long dreams and felt a shiver down his spine when realizing that this man's condition was going to get worse. As the days followed, these long dreams had worsened, gotten to the point where Tetsuro felt like he was gone for 10 years before waking up in the hospital. The man feared sleeping, and he was helpless to these dreams. Studying and examining Tetsuro, Dr. Kuroda came to the conclusion that Tetsuro was suffering from an extremely rare sleep disorder where his mind was fixated on the illusion that he was spending more time within his dreams, meaning that his mind was disconnecting itself from reality, that a minute within the real world would be like a month for Tetsuro when dreaming, and Tetsuro was losing control of this. And even though Dr. Kuroda knew that these dreams were destroying Tetsuro's mentality when trying to adjust back into the real world, every night when Tetsuro would sleep, the dreams kept getting longer and longer. These dreams, they're not like waking up in a new life. They are worlds with no structure, no purpose, nor reason. One dream was about 10 years. Tetsuro was a soldier who was trapped in a jungle, constantly running from an enemy, not knowing why he was there, not knowing the enemy, not knowing who was chasing him, but that was it. 10 years of running through the jungle in fear before waking up. And it was one dream where Tetsuro had spent nine years straight studying for exams. No test, no breaks, just study for a test that never came. And another dream, eight years searching for a toilet that doesn't exist. To a man like Dr. Kuroda and anybody else, they may seem like bizarre dreams, but for Tetsuro, it was hell like he would experience different variations of hell when sleeping. And after so much time living in that hell, Tetsuro would wake up and find it more and more difficult to adjust back into the real world. And even though Dr. Kuroda knew that Tetsuro was under a great deal of fear and pressure, that the efforts on convincing Tetsuro that these long dreams were just an illusion was hopeless. Fact is, these dreams were beyond Dr. Kuroda's expertise as a neurosurgeon. He knew that time was running out, that somehow or some way, Dr. Kuroda has to find the cause behind these long dreams before Tetsuro finds himself trapped in a dream that would reach past a hundred years, or more, or worse, may find himself trapped within an endless dream. As Dr. Kuroda feared, Tetsuro's dreams was growing rapidly. He could even see how they were affecting Tetsuro. Imagine the body and mind experiencing 50 years overnight, trying to do what you can on remembering everything you've done on the previous day. It had even gotten to the point where Tetsuro would wake up with a different intonation, as if he were talking to someone from a different century. Even the brain scans confirmed that Tetsuro was experiencing these lengths of time, waking up much different than the day before, a man who was lost in his own space or time. And as of now, things had gotten worse for Tetsuro, to where even his body began taking physical changes as a result of these dreams, as if he was evolving. Which brings us back to the morning after Mami's unexpected visit where Dr. Kuroda took Dr. Yamachi to a darkened room 
and introduce him to the man who had lost both his connection with reality and his humanity. As a result of these long dreams, Tetsuro's body changed or evolved. His skin was now transparent, his cranium had abnormally grown, his facial features dramatically changed as if he was a different species, and his blank, colorless eyes. Lord knows what this man had seen overnight. How far in the future did this man go to turn out like this? As a result of these long dreams, Tetsuro had lost the ability to distinguish the real world from the world within his dreams. Meaning that even though he's awake, Tetsuro still feels like he's within the dream world. Dr. Kuroda had also noticed the concerning behavior as well, like Tetsuro's moving past the feelings of fear, joy, and happiness, disassociating himself from human emotions. The only shred of humanity Tetsuro had was remembering his life with Mami, something that only existed within his dream. Supposedly within this dream, he and Mami were husband and wife, spending a lifetime with someone you deeply love, weeping over the warming memories of a life that never existed, which may explain Tetsuro's midnight visit. It wasn't easy when seeing Tetsuro make another effort on reuniting with Mammy, causing another scene when running back into Mammy's room again, watching the man's world being crushed when Mammy would scream in terror at the sight of Tetsuro, calling him death, painfully realizing that his life, those warming memories, all of it, was not real, just another hellish nightmare. When Tetsuro began regaining his touch with reality, this man was very afraid. Tetsuro knew that he wasn't going to be cured from these long dreams, which is why he had nothing left but a question for Dr. Kuroda. What will happen when these dreams never end? What happens to a man if he never wakes up from an endless dream? As a result of Tetsuro's unexpected visit, Mammy's fear of death had gotten worse. Two or three times a day, she finds herself being restrained and medicated because of the idea that Tetsuro will come for her again. As for Tetsuro, obviously he wasn't a threat. The man was now in a vegetative state. As expected, Tetsuro had finally reached the point where he was now within that endless dream. Tetsuro's body continued on with its physical changes. His body had thinned drastically to where he now resembled a skeleton. The facial features had sunken. Basically, Tetsuro was no longer human. If Dr. Kuroda didn't know better, it would seem like Tetsuro was devolving. The strange case of Tetsuro Mikata left Dr. Kuroda wondering the possibilities of an eternity within an instant. The idea being so far into the future Wondering if it's possible for Tetsuro to wake up from a dream that feels endless. Is it possible that there is an eternity that lies within our own minds? Or is it just an illusion? And the only way Dr. Kuroda was able to find the answers behind these curiosities was by looking at what became of Tetsuro. Unfortunately, Tetsuro never woke up. As a result of his spirit being trapped within that endless dream, Tetsuro's body was nothing more but a husk, crumbling into nothing but scraps and dust that will fade away with the wind. A week after Tetsuro's death, the man who suffered from long dreams was nothing more but a bizarre story shared throughout the hospital. Long dreams, a disease, a condition, a mystery, but for a man like Dr. Kuroda, it was something more. It wasn't long until people began seeing an improvement on Mammy and her fear of death. However, there was also some concern in regards to her 
dreams, how she described them to be a month long within a single night. That was when Dr. Yamachi approached Dr. Kuroda about Mami's unusual behavior and the possibility that what happened to Tetsuro may be a contagion. No, what's happening to Mami isn't the results of a contagious outbreak. As Dr. Kuroda explained, this is the revolutionary step within the fields of medical research. You see, when Tetsuro's body crumbled into dust, there was nothing left of him except these crystals that were inside his head. After hours of research, Dr. Kuroda couldn't find the properties nor the link between the crystals and the dreams. However, Dr. Kuroda is a devoted man. And sometimes, the answers we seek may involve taking risks. Which is why Dr. Kuroda was administering Mami with the substance extracted from the crystals. Of course, Dr. Kuroda was secretly experimenting on Mami, but it was only a matter of time before these crystals were going to end up being tested on humans. So why not test it on a patient who is far from recovering over her feared death? A woman who fears nothingness. Imagine having the ability to give people the option to live forever, or the illusion of living forever within an instant. With the power to show everyone these eternal dreams, mankind no longer has to fear death. Except for Dr. Yamachi, this was madness. Death is a natural part of life, and giving humanity the chance to avoid that with these long dreams would desecrate the souls of the dying. Fact is, we may not know what becomes of us after we all die, but Dr. Kuroda can't deny that Tetsuro was suffering within his own hell. The idea of being forever trapped within an endless dream, a hell that resides within our minds, is both unthinkable and inhumane, something that is far worse than death itself.